classic hardcore, but I'm a melee only mage. Classic Hardcore is already World of Warcraft's hardest game mode. It forces yeah. you to battle the hazardous 100 plus hour journey of reaching level 60 with the chance of losing it all with what? a singular death. On top of that, some players limit themselves even more by not trading other players, not interacting with the auction house, and in some cases, not even grouping with others. <laughs> a completely solo experience where yep. all your available resources are gathered by you and you alone. It's cool. And if you were to die at any point, it's back to square one. Mm -hmm. Last year, I attempted this already messed up challenge, but with an additional restriction. Okay. I was a mage that could only use spells from the arcane school of That's magic. That's rough. No fire, no frost. All the things that make mages extremely overpowered when leveling. Frost Nova, yeah, Blizzard, messed up. Flame Strike, and more were all not allowed. To deal damage, I had to rely on either arcane explosion Bro. or arcane missiles. But yeah. even in this, with everything stacked against me, I it. managed to reach level 60 without dying a single time successfully completing the challenge. So, is the game hours. just too easy? No matter how many things I stack on top of each other, there is never any satisfaction at the end of it. Just a need mm. for more, more, and more. <laughs> but isn't this yeah. just life? Aren't we all just running around in circles chasing the next big thing, hoping oh. and praying that the next goal is in? Oh. That's kind of sad. Well, there was one thing that really piqued my interest when okay. playing the Arcane Mage. You see, Arcane Missiles is a spell unlocked at level 8, which meant mm. the only thing we had access melee. to was melee. What if, instead of having access to only one school of spells, mm. I had access to no damaging spells whatsoever? What if my only way of killing enemies as a mage was by using melee? What? Not only to level 8, but all the way to level 60. Does it Dude, that just sounds like... That's just pain. <laughs> That's like not even fun. What? Okay. This sound extremely miserable. Yeah. Am I going to do it? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So, what does it entail being a melee-only mage? Yeah. Well, first of all, I want all damage that I deal to come exclusively from melee attacks. Mm -hmm. This bans any and all spells dealing any form of damage. Okay. Even stuff like Frost Nova, Fire Blast, but and other things like that. Anything that lets me kill stuff without actually using melee is a no-go. Secondly, I don't want anything casted that affects my enemies in any direct way. So no polymorph or counter spell. This what? actually leaves us with a few options, that namely buffs like frost armor, shields, and ice block, amongst other things like teleports and conjuring <laughs> food. These are buffs and spells that affect me and not my enemies directly. This is insane. Most importantly, this will force me to properly engage in melee combat any time I want something done. You're the aforementioned frost armor attacking. actually makes us significantly stronger to our arcane yeah, counter. He, he put like a little note about frost armor, guys, uh, here. With a few options, namely buffs like Frost Armor, Shields, and right Ice Block, amongst other things like Teleports and Conjuring Food. These are buffs- I know Frost Armor debuffs my enemies and cannot therefore affect them directly, but the point is cannot cheese and counter spawn out utilizing melee only if I had access to other spells. That, that's about, yeah. Levels. While it increases our armor and slows the movement speed of enemies that hit us, by far the most valuable trait is its 25% attack speed slow on affected enemies. Yeah. This is our one light in the darkness. Our one saving How are you going to even kill anything? 20, like... Where we gain access to new usable spells. Our only form of damage is auto-attacking, which turns combat into somewhat resembling that of RuneScape, where all we can do is click, sit Dude, back, Dude, no, this makes RuneScape seem like a, a goddamn, like, revolutionized, like, crazy high APM, like, insane... What do you mean? ...and pray that our DPS is higher than that of the enemies. This is why a buff that essentially reduces enemy damage down by 25% is extremely crucial. Another variable of utmost pally. importance is our weapon. It's incredibly difficult to find any cloth gear with stats like Skip could be as high PM. I actually ha have heard about that, that you need to like swap skills and weapons and shit. Strength or attack power. So our DPS ultimately comes down to the weapon itself. As yeah, he somehow made up a spec that's worse than leveling as a paladin. It's actually impressive. It, it, it is pretty impressive. We have access to one-handed swords and daggers, but with one-handers being significantly weaker than the two-handed counterpart, our only real weapon of choice is a staff. 
Our okay. success in this challenge will largely come down to whether or not we can stay on top of our weapon upgrades. After yeah. spending one hour gathering enough coin for one such upgrade, we travel to Karanos to purchase a walking Ooh. stick, which comes with a humble three times the damage done. Then it was but already he, he, he time to ditch down Moreau. <laughs> because we are so astoundingly weak, rotating zones to stay on top of levels will play a huge role in this challenge. Yeah. Being ahead of our enemy in levels has multiple advantages. One, armor damage reduction is based on the attacker's level. So the higher we are, are, the more damage we deal to the enemies. Dude, to this seems so miserable. Oh my lord. Two, weapon skill is less of a factor, which gives us an easier what? time to hit. And three, their health is generally lower than that of higher levels, of course. To show the obscene amount of time it takes to deal with a single enemy, even at a lower level, I'm going to try to fit this entire ad section into a single kill. Did you know that I spent two years developing a game with my friend? It's a survivor's type game for the phone or tablet where we funny. really tried focusing on a concise experience with depth and replayability, and I think we managed to do just that. There are 30 spells in the I game, like each this. with a legendary variant, plus different traits and elements you can combine with synergies and set bonuses for insane effects. Whoa. And it's free. Please try it. And that was one and just mob. like that, one level four cobalt down, oh. possibly hundreds to go. After aiding the denizens of Northshire Abbey, we attempted the bold act of fighting a single cobalt tunneler. Mm. And when that proved too risky, it was instead time to finish off our own starting zone to secure level seven. Dude. In similar fashion, I quickly abandoned Dunmora once again to journey across the world to the land of the elves. On my way, I picked up I mining and you wouldn't believe it, blacksmithing. Ooh. The idea was to craft a few weight stones before ultimately abandoning the art of smithing in favor of, you guessed it, engineering. Yeah. But the present is now, and my trip to the tree was Oh, he's uneventful. doing the freaking uh, crocodile skip. My reason for being here was previously stated, I do actually have an ulterior motive coming to Teldrassil, and that is in search of a brand new weapon. A quick There's glance a through here? the available staves in World of Warcraft quickly informs us that the first attainable uncommon staff is actually in Teldrassil. Oh, is that from the Elite Quest? From a quest called the Relics of Awakening. Oh, not that which one, Which can I be guess. accessed as early as level 4. Do not be fooled by the misleading requirements, as the actual Ooh, quest the itself den. is one of the harder starting zone adventures in the game. Yep. Especially for a gnome such as ourselves. To prepare, it's I hard, took yeah. Shadow Glen and secure level 8. By this time, I would have acquired arcane missiles and finally started my challenge. But it, this might as well be like a elite quest, actually. This cave. not our current prerogative, <clears throat> nor will it ever be. Yeah. Now, with all three Alliance starting zones finished, it was finally time to attempt questing in the grown-up world. Okay. Perhaps I had stressed a bit too much because the next levels flew by in a flash. Bro, you know he's lying when he says that. Like, dude, that, that, that nothing is flying by with a flash here. You are literally auto attacking mobs as a mage that there there is nothing that goes by a flash and at level 9 i attempted to make my way into the barrow den to chase our coveted staff okay but i very very quickly decided against it killing even one enemy was a task for me and we would have to battle our way Dude, he does six percent of the mobs health for auto attack to masses of furball <laughs> in a snaking underground dungeon with patrols and, and respawns left, right, and center. Besides, there was already another way easier staff to acquire just around the corner from a mage-specific quest at level 10. Yeah. So we battled our way through the rest of our quests, ending up in Darnassus and reaching level 10. Look, okay. I'll be honest, it doesn't really seem like the mage talent tree is specifically tailored around melee. You think but so? That's, that's fine. Our farthest goal is reaching the ice barrier, as we'll increase our combat proficiency by a significant Fuck margin. A. But that's level 40. And until then, there are a few things we can pick up along the way. Yeah. Starting off with Frost Warding. A simple increase to our armor gain from Frost Armor, as well as future upgrade to Frost Ward, mm. if we ever reach it. After securing some cheap food from Darkshore, it was time to head back home. Cool. And see to that mage Ooh. quest. Okay. All we have to do is loot one item in a little hut over by Nomrigon. And we will be I mean, rewarded with our best in slot staff until level 12. An easy task for such a boon. Bling, 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 plong, 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 bling, 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 plong, 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 bling, 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 plong, 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 bling, 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 plong. Okay. Oh, but you gotta kill that guy. Wait, where is it? Is it that little box to the left? I think it is. Oh, he's struggling. No, he's gonna die! He actually fucking died! Wait! 
How much okay, time? Uh, I'd rather not dwell on this because the more I look back at it, the worse it gets. First of all, I thought the item was on the second floor. Yeah. I it... thought there would be no enemy on the second floor. I didn't think to bring any potions to help me live. In panic, I tried to run instead of resetting on the elevator, and I got dazed running oh. away. But, but hey, look, it's no problem. I was no only back jumping. level 10, which only took me a total of five hours. Anyways... Time to go again. Please download my game to make my suffering worth anything. Thank you. This time, knowing I wouldn't get the Teldrassil staff, I chose to forego the zone entirely. Instead, spending more time in Elwyn, picking up some potions along the way. I also completely skipped blacksmithing this time around because it was a total fluke, opting yeah. instead to instantly get engineering. Engineering is, as most of you know, by far the most versatile and useful profession Grenades. in World of Warcraft for many expansions, but especially in Classic, yeah. and especially for somebody like me. Dynamites and bombs will significantly boost my DPS, mm. work on multiple targets and also are a way for me to pull at range. The Dude, you will not be doing any AoE. What? Who are you kidding yourself here? Okay, you have one grenade, you want to start doing 10 more pulls? What's going on? Another is something which might be overlooked, but being able to pull enemies from far away is not something <laughs> I'm normally able to do and might be crucial. But hey, aren't bombs basically spells? I'm just wondering... Who the heck is gonna do a dungeon with this guy? Oh, looking for more dead mines and need one mage to fill the group. Oh, I'm a mage, but I'm not casting any spells, and I want emberstone. I want the emberstone staff. Well. No, even having access to one damaging spell can almost completely nullify the challenge, because I could kite endlessly. Oh. But explosives have a whole minute cooldown, and require constant upkeep and resources that mm. I have to gather myself, considering I am solo self-found. So, I, can I am this, this... it a fair trade. With all the extra preparation, we once <laughs> again set off to our last eternal resting place. Okay. This time, the plan was a bit more refined. Stay on the elevator to reset aggro. Good. Kill the gnome up top because I still thought the item was there. Realized he had, it wasn't. He had to pod for one mob, by the way. He just potted for one mob. Eat up and kill the guy downstairs who runs out, subsequently aggroing three extra gnomes while my potion was on cooldown. Oh. From back inside while half health to prevent all enemies from respawning, once again reset on the elevator, and then finally grab the item. Jesus. And just like that... <clears throat> It's a good staff, though. We have a new staff for the next two levels. <clears throat> yep. After a while of taking our new weapon for a ride, it was eventually time to visit our cross-continental friends once again. Because you we parted for one mob in Japlo 1? Well, then that's different, bro. That's Japlo 1. Happened to not quite be ready to leave the starting zones just yet. Of course, Tedrasil was a literal walk in the park. And upon hitting level 12, we made a small trip to Darkshore and secured our new Biss yeah. staff from a very easy run back and forth quest. Ooh. I died for a staff that lasted for 20 seconds of video content. Smiley face. Now three levels later, and with a considerable weapon upgrade, I was finally confident enough to take on the Barrow Den and mm -hmm. collected our now useless uncommon staff. Yep. For the next few hours, we travel the world to finish off each starting zone, catch up on engineering, and generally just prep ourselves for the next big adventure. Yep. After getting halfway through level 14 with all three zones completed, I felt- 11 hours for level 14. <laughs> It was finally time to take our first big step into the new world and tackle Darkshore for real this time. Oh. Another thing I overlooked is the importance of buffs in the challenge like this. A stray priest threw me a 42 when I was out and about, literally Ooh. doubling my HP. Yeah, on my way nuts. to Darkshore, I made sure to spend our savings on the next staff upgrade, a simple common staff from a vendor. Mm. To gain the upper hand against our enemies, there are a few tricks we need to employ. Yep. Some of those tricks take the form of engineering or potions, but yet another is first aid. Mm. Bit of a weird one since normally any bandaging is interrupted mm. by taking taking damage, which makes it somewhat useless for us having access to no crowd control. Yep. Or so you may think. The talent Frostbite gives our chill effects a 15% chance to freeze our enemies uh, in and that works off of Frost Armor. place, rooting them for 5 seconds. Mm. So every time Smart. an enemy hit us, there is a chance they will be frozen in place, giving us time to scurry off and get a few ticks of bandaging. Nice. Now 15% is not a whole lot, but it turns out to be quite consistent throughout an encounter. It's every, like every attack. need about 20 hits total to kill me. 
Reaching level 16 after 13 hours and 40 minutes is starting to make one thing very clear. Having to limit myself to only killing lower level enemies gives us an easier time yeah. but reduces XP gain no, quite significantly. That plus the fact that kills are just very slow in general brings us to the obvious conclusion that we simply need more DPS. The okay. thing is, man, that's not even that slow compared to how fast some people level. When you think about that he's doing a melee mage with no spells... That is actually not that slow. He he is doing over a level per hour. It's not bad. Need more DPS. But looking at our options, getting significant like upgrades fast, to our weapon is starting to become a hard task. And even so, the DPS increase between the common and uncommon weapons is incremental. Mm. So that leaves us with a choice. Either stay with our low DPS, slowly upgrading our weapons every five levels or so from a vendor, yeah. or try something crazy. Ooh. The Staff of Westfall Dead is a rare quality staff attained by Ooh. bringing the head of Van Cleef to Grand Stout Mantle in Westfall. The DPS increase this would bring is insane. Yeah. A whole 33% higher than the respective common quality item for the same level. Okay, so all we have to do is clear the dead mines once. Who the hell would bring a melee-only mage <laughs> to a dungeon? Uh, yep. I do not know. But it is a problem we have to solve one way or another. Either by threatening to disband my Cataclysm Guild in the absence of aid, oh. or by simply begging to any random soul on the mm. roads of Westfall to bring me with. Mm. Of course, I'm still following the SSF rules of dungeoneering, which means I can only do each one a single time, and my group members have to be within the correct level range. I was just for the legend, dude. This reminds me of the time where we were leveling in Hardcore, and we played the... Uh with a guy called Walker. There was a paladin who only RP walked all the way. And we would bring him for most of the dungeons that we did. Whenever he was there, we did we brought him. And he was it was so fun. It, it, it's like those random little like memes and like things that make the world feel so worthwhile in a way. Walker was a chat, dude, he was a legend. The blatant boosting is out of the equation. Alas, that is for future melee wizard to worry about. For now, I have my eyes set on a few pieces of gear. Yeah. Currently, intellect is quite useless for us because, well, we don't cast any spells. But stamina. Stamina is an insanely good stat he since killed it Vagash. doesn't only increase our chances of survival, it also directly correlates to what enemies we're capable of fighting. Damn. One such item comes from the Silver Stream Mine, where after the simple task of collecting four pieces of Miner's Gear, we are awarded with a stunning four stamina. Level 18 was not turning out to be a quick level. To prepare for my eventual Deadmines run, I made sure to finish up all the prerequisite quests mm -hmm. and swimmingly so until it was time to escort the Fias Traitor, a fellow who might be the biggest idiot this side of for the sure, kingdoms. Break. Break Instead it. of taking any other path rather than the main road through Moonbrook, my mm. man insists on the least inconspicuous path in existence. Yep. After promptly failing the quest twice, I thought it best to come back oh at a later date, perhaps with a few more levels under my belt. Evidently, that was not going to be quick, as we were approaching the three hour mark to reach level 19. <sighs> Even these enemies that are four to five levels beneath us put up a considerable fight. Jesus. Casters are even scarier because they do not get affected by our frost armor. Good LOS, so to handle them, we have to use strategies that once again just add more and more time onto the grind. Eventually, mm -hmm. we did reach level 19, and with our new improved stats, we promptly went and failed the escort quest a third time for good measure, nice. before heading over to Loch Modan to finish up the scraps we left behind. Level 19 is probably the most difficult so far on mm -hmm. this grind, and most likely for the foreseeable future. Upon hitting our next level, we'll be granted a plethora of tools to deal with more challenging enemies, nice. and a spell that actually lets us utilize mana. But for now, we are left with only the bottom of the barrel quests, fighting enemies far below our level that even still are challenging it's to beat. Rough, man. Halfway through the level, and two hours into the grind, I once again relocated- Oh, dude, not this beach. This beach is scary, man. To Dark Shore, where I stayed for another hour. After a bunch okay. of traveling, some quests turned in, and yeah, 24 more. hours played. I hit level 20 on my melee only mage. Woo! 20 in 24 hours. And this level is absolutely stacked. 
blink, evocation, oh, yeah, firework to help us against casters, but most importantly, mana shield. This spell effectively doubles my total health against physical damage, which completely opens up our game to higher leveled enemies, and so will good. hopefully speed up our process a lot. I don't know, Galera. I don't know if I'm gonna be playing with OnlyFangs or not, man. I will be doing hardcore. Like, dude, this video is getting me freaking hyped to do hardcore, I and mean, we will do hardcore in October. I'm just still... I'm still thinking between the possibilities of playing with the NA people and the OnlyFang stuff or just doing my own thing with uh, our community on EU. I don't really know yet. I'm gonna try to make my, my, my mind up about it soon so I, I know what people expect of me because I do know a lot of people maybe would want to join or they want to know what I'm doing so so they can, you know, maybe people want to join or maybe people want to see something else, right? So EU, EU. I see a lot of people say EU and I, I am leaning a little bit towards that personally but um but yeah care of we'll see though you'd have to be a midnight andy yeah i kind of like being there for the eu people that that's also that thing right yeah, okay, basically the entire place was already cleared, but those that Easy. weren't stood nary a chance. Between the whole point of MMO is to play with other people. Yeah, but it's not like I'm not going to play with people if I play on EU. Like, there, there's a lot of people with the community to play with. Fire Ward and Mana Shield, and after four attempts, the Defias Traitor finally showed us the entrance to the Dead Mines, readying us for the next step of our journey. Also, don't forget Dude, this to check video was out cool. my incredible, amazing game where I drew every sprite by hand. See ya. This video was really good. I I'm really glad I decided to watch this, man. Jampanos. I I'll, I'll toss him a subscribe as well. Dude, I'm really hyped to see where he's gonna go with this, man. I wanna see him do Dead Mines and how the, uh, the people are gonna react to that. Check out his, his channel, guys. Jampanos. He's almost at 13k subs. Check him out, man.